Thank you for joining us here at 4 o'clock. I'm Marion Brooks. And I'm Alex Maragos. The doors are just opening here on day three of the Democratic National Convention now underway. Let's give you a live look outside the United Center this afternoon. Tonight's theme is a fight for our freedoms. The rehearsals for tonight's primetime events have been happening all afternoon. Stephanie Holt and Allison Rosati have a nearly front row seat. Let's call it a very good seat. Very good seat. It is going to be hard no matter where you're sitting, though, for United Center to be any louder than it was last night with the speeches. Oh well, boy. Alex and Mary and a small, mighty crowd earlier this afternoon was already raising the roof. I think the word is out. The afternoon is the time to be at the DNC, a free concert every day. Today, we were treated to the voice of John Legend and Sheila E. singing Prince's Let's Go Crazy. And Stevie Wonder took the stage singing Higher Ground twice. No doubt, delegates are going to be making some noise tonight, but it is going to be hard to top last night's level of applause welcoming home the Obamas. That's right. Last night, the convention heard from Michelle and Barack Obama, who really got the crowd fired up. Of course, this was about motivating the base. A story and a message of optimism and praise of Vice President Harris. They also held nothing back against her Republican opponent, former President Donald Trump. Well, tonight, the lineup is set. The speakers include former President Bill Clinton, who accepted the party's nomination for president in Chicago in 1996. Minnesota Governor Tim Walz, who tonight will accept the nomination for vice president. And tomorrow will be the Democrats' biggest night as Vice President Kamala Harris accepts the party's nomination for president. Tonight, Walz will take to the stage, giving his acceptance speech, introducing himself to the American people. Our political reporter, Marianne Ahern, joins us as always here at the United Center for what's going to be a very big night for Tim Walls. What can we expect to hear from him? Well, here is the coach, right? Kind of the Ted Lasso character that everybody has had a very smooth rollout, I would say, so far. There have been some questions. So it's going to be his first big introduction to the rest of the country. Well, not well known necessarily beyond Minnesota circles, but actually he was head of the National Democratic Governors Association. Donald Trump has said the VP doesn't really matter. Well, nevertheless, Tim Walls, it's his big night, and the place will be rocking, as you mentioned, with that tribute to the Minnesota native Prince. Look for John Legend to perform a tribute tonight with a big nod to Minnesota native Prince. Of course, it is Tim Walls' big night. Also today, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg, who was a finalist to be Kamala Harris's VP at the Illinois delegation breakfast. He's not holding back on criticizing J.D. Vance. J.D. Vance represents doubling down on the negativity. I mean, a guy who, childless cat, like, I'm a dog guy, a guy with two kids, and I'm offended by that. That's just not a way to reach out to the American people. Walls did a walkthrough on the stage this afternoon. Before he speaks, it will be former President Bill Clinton. I want to build a bridge to the 21st century that ends the permanent underclass. Clinton certainly has a fondness for Chicago as the 1996 convention was hosted here. I think what we're seeing tonight is a continuation of the Democrats rolling out their rock stars. Last night it was the Obamas today, and then of course before that, Hillary Clinton and now President Clinton will speak. I, I think it's to remind and to, to generate excitement among Democratic Democrats delegates about what is possible, um, about their accomplishments in the past, uh, how, you know, the, these these campaigns have worked together in the past. So I think you're going to continue to see reminders of that. And here at the DNC, Chicago Congressman Jonathan Jackson, what's his take on Tim Walls as the VP pick? He speaks in plain English, so I'm glad that he comes from the Midwest, has Midwestern values, can insert a word like weird, just one thing, nobody's hit the bully back, and Tim is a fighter. Tim Walls, who said he never used a teleprompter until he was picked to be the VP nominee. But as a former football coach, he's about to deliver the biggest speech of his life. And I had to say, I noticed even in the tape there, Tim Walls knocking on the wood podium. We know football coaches can be superstitious, obviously hoping for some good luck tonight. And we'll be here to watch it all. We'll be watching it. Marianne, thank you so much. All Appreciate right. it. Let's talk about the protests that are making headlines outside of this United Center. We know dozens were arrested last night outside of Ogilvy Transportation Center, big metro hub. JC Navarrete joining us live from Union Park this afternoon. That's where another one is about to get it away. JC, tell us what's going on now. 
Yes, yeah, Stefan, this is uh, the park where everything got started here on day one of the DNC. You can see the rally is well underway behind me. Now, as you mentioned, we did see clashes with police yesterday outside of the Ogilvy Transportation Center. A potential for more clashes here today as this protest will become a march onto Park 578. However, at F Park 578 at 430, there's plans for a counter protest. So we're keeping a close eye on what may happen. Police responding Wednesday afternoon to the clashes and mass arrests at the Ogilvy Transportation Center Tuesday night. Last night was a danger to our city and a danger to our citizens. CPD Superintendent Larry Snelling providing a clear look at just how many protesters ended up in cuffs. We've now learned at least 55 people were arrested as part of a mass arrest, including three journalists. Four injuries were reported two to protesters who were hospitalized and released, and two more to officers who refused treatment at the scene. We will not allow people to come to this city, disrespect it, and destroy it. 22 of those arrested were from out of town, specifically the West Coast. One man at the protest tells me he saw those agitating the crowd, and while he would not go to those lengths, he still stands by them. I wouldn't go that far. But, uh, you know, I'm definitely out here trying to just at least be a part of everything. But, yeah, I mean, I don't feel like they distract from the message. If anything, they add on to it. Wednesday afternoon, protesters remain committed to having their voices heard, even if it means coming face to face with counter protests and even police. We will not end our protests. We will not end our phone calls. We will not end our emails. We will keep coming to the streets every week, every day if we have to. Again, Superintendent Larry Snelly defending the actions by his officers coming up at five. Here we speak to a protester who disagrees with what he has to say. And again, this rally just got underway. It will become a march onto Park 578. However, at 430, a counter protest is planned over there. So we're going to be keeping a very close eye as once again, there is a potential for more clashes between protesters themselves and even police. Once again, I'll send things back to you guys. Thank you, JC. The, the FBI tonight is investigating reports of maggots slipped into a hotel breakfast that was served to Democratic delegates that are attending this convention. Now, Chicago police say a group of women entered the Fairmont Hotel this morning and began placing unknown objects onto the tables containing food. Now, one victim was treated and released on the scene. Multiple delegates are telling NBC5 News that the maggots were placed in the food. Delegates from Indiana, Minnesota, and Ohio are staying at the Fairmont Hotel. Well, the DNC has certainly put the city of Chicago in the national, if not the international, spotlight this week. You may have seen Governor J.B. Pritzker. He was on the stage earlier, serving as the city's host. Well, some are asking, where is Chicago's Mayor Brandon Johnson? And why does he seem to have a lesser role? NBC5 Charlie Borja Husky brings us some insight. 176 votes for the next president of the United States. It was a telling sign when Governor J.B. Pritzker announced the Illinois delegate count on the floor of the DNC Tuesday night. Chicago Mayor Brandon Johnson was nowhere to be seen. And when the president and Jill Biden arrived at Soldier Field Monday afternoon, it was Pritzker and County Board President Tony Preckwinkle at the front of the line to greet them. Sunday, when the vice president and the second gentleman landed, the congressional delegation was at the front of the greeting line. The mayor was last. In a city that has come to be known by its chief executive, it's not Brandon Johnson, but J.B. Pritzker who has taken the lead at the DNC. There is a reason for that, according to political scientist and former alderman Dick Simpson. Pritzker is much more important to the Democratic Party at this stage. Um, Chicago is obviously going to vote for the Democratic ticket. But Pritzker has some reach beyond Illinois. He was one of the finalists for vice president. We got to get the politics right. This morning, the mayor spoke but took no questions at the Illinois delegation's breakfast, his first appearance after being called out by Axios.com. His campaign releasing a statement saying Mayor Johnson's top priority is ensuring a safe and vibrant convention while also promoting Chicago as a great place to live, work, visit, and do business. But Simpson says there are other tensions that may be fueling the rift. There has to be tension because, for instance, um, 
The uh, mayor wants the governor to give $150 million to fix the Chicago Teachers Union pensions at CPS. At one point this morning, both Johnson's and Pritzker's paths crossed as they ran from delegation breakfast to delegation breakfast. They reportedly shook hands and wished each other well. In Lincoln Park, Charlie Voitcha, Husky, NBC5 News. Thank you to Charlie. Well, being in Chicago, believe it or not, is actually a bit of a full circle moment for Vice President Kamala Harris. Who knew? We talk a lot about her California connection, but she actually lived in Evanston as a toddler. Her parents, both academics at Northwestern University. Now, a young Kamala actually lived with her family in a home, this home, on the edge of campus. Her father was an economics professor. Her mother was a biological researcher. The house is located at 620 Library Place. It's actually now home to the African Studies program there at Northwestern. Well, our coverage continues live here at day three at the United Center for the DNC. Ahead at 4.30, we're going to meet the convention's youngest delegate, how he's planning to make a difference here. And at 5 o'clock, focusing on women, actress, uh, actress Julia Louis-Dreyfus and eight female governors come together to highlight the issues important to women. And, of course, you can watch all the action from the DNC tonight and tomorrow. We will be live at the United Center for every newscast, and we will carry all of this evening's speeches uninterrupted on our streaming channel, on the NBC Chicago app, and on our website, NBCChicago.com. Again, checking it out, the delegates are definitely finding it easier to get here, just like all of us. I guess it's become a bit easier each day it's here at the DNC. It's kind of routine now. We, the, the security checkpoints, the way to get around all the fence lines and things, I think we're kind of getting this down after three days. And, uh, you know, Marion and Alex, I, I think we're ready for night three. Yes, we are. You get used to it, and then you pack up and leave. And then you pack up and leave. Just as soon as it's all coming together, it's time to go. But uh, it, it does get a little bit easier after the yeah, first time, that's for sure. Thanks so much, Stefan and Allison. We'll be checking back with you in just a few minutes. We're going to check in now on what Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump having his first outdoor rally today since the assassination attempt last month. Every American was safer under President Trump. In fact, the entire world was safer when I sat behind that beautiful, resolute desk in the Oval Office. Today, Trump was surrounded by bulletproof glass at this event in North Carolina. His running mate, J.D. Vance, joined him there as well. Both focused their speeches on national security. Trump and Vance have been rallying all across the country this week, trying to draw attention away from the Democratic National Convention.